Welcome back. Um, I'm actually doing a third video about the, the A600 gaming console and yeah. My idea is to put in this HDMI converter, RGB to HDMI, and I have it here. It's this little thing that plugs onto the Denise chip and it normally consists only of this. There's a button for the menu and this Pi Zero, I think this is a Pi Zero 2 actually. Um, I did put in an angled HDMI plug here, converter, so this has HDMI, so that it actually fits in the case. And I put in one of these um, GPIO extenders because if I plug it in just like this, so the Pi into the, DIN, uh, into the RGB to HDMI, this connector here, this HDMI connector, pushes against this back plate and I can't connect anything. So see if I put this here and this here, like this, you can see this has some overhang here and this is not good. Even if I remove this and plug in the connector directly, it doesn't work, so no dice. So I'm, I'm using this here, this has three of these extenders, but I'm just using one, plugging this in here. And like this, I get a little bit more room here and can actually angle this thing here. Problem is, this right here just sits on top of Denise and you can see this goes in very lightly and if I push this back in, it just comes loose. It's just totally wiggly and doesn't hold on too good. So I have to find a solution to put this in there for good and hold it in place because like this it's unusable. It's no good. I tried 10 times to just push it in and make it work. I saw that it works and the installation is pretty simple. You just push this on here, put in SD card with the Copper Dragon software. I will put a link in the description. Uh, copy the Amiga config file from the Amiga folder to the root folder of the SD card and off you go. But it doesn't stay in place. It always comes loose and then the Amiga doesn't boot and all hell breaks loose. So no good. So I have to think how to put this in place here. And I don't have any valid ideas right now because I can't screw it in. There's nothing to screw to. Can't drill a hole into the motherboard, it doesn't work. Could hot glue it in, but that would be a very shitty solution. But in the end, I may actually end there. Huh. Yeah, I did put in the, the HDMI port here, which was unpopulated up till now. Yeah, so let me think. We have a lot of cables, that's for sure. Um, hmm. This video is kindly sponsored by PCBWay. Thank you, PCBWay. So I did build this elaborate construction here, which it's not exactly the same because there's this chip in the way. If I place this about here, this sits flush on the board now. So I could hot glue it on. Maybe it's enough just to keep it in place and not to wiggle around too much. And I can also, because I put on standoffs on top, I can also screw in the Pi Zero, at least on these sides. And it has some support here, so that does wiggle if the thingy here moves, which is good. And yeah, now I have to find a solution to put this on here and make it non-wiggling. Okay, I did glue in this little thing here, the standoff, just to hold this right here in place because this just to hang in the, in the air and I don't want that. And now it's nice and flush with this. It's completely straight. And it has some strain relief and I will just put some cable binder over here so that this keeps stuck down, which is good. And I'm using this um, Uhu LED light booster, which just works in, in 10 seconds you get with this UV light. Um, hardened glue, which is nice. Um, yeah, so this is my construction so far. And maybe I will use this UV light just to glue this in place instead of hot glue. Already got my hot glue gun out, which is, well, not ideal. 
and very unprecise, but this seems to be quite good. I'm thinking about just gluing this in here and not using any standoffs, uh, any um, cable binders. So yeah. did glue everything to the board and I just noticed that it's still a bit flaky. So yeah, not great, but I will give this a try. I uh, have no other way to do this. Um, and so I did these all these standoffs. I uh, that that one came already loose. I don't know if this works or not. I have no idea. Well, these are all loose again. And they don't seem to be hardened, so it's also not great. Let me reharden these with this light here. Maybe that helps. But I somehow doubt it because well, it's a shitty design. This clip-on socket is just way too loose. I could probably change it out if I had one, or I could use a different cable if I had one, but no to both of that. So I'm stuck with what I have and I have to make do with this. I will give this some strain relief, I think, if, uh, by just putting this cable on here. Yes the place where the RF modulator was, so I could do some cable tying of this to here. I think that could help and give it a little strength. It wouldn't wiggle around at least, which would be good. And I think I will do that. Yeah, that looks better. Okay. So let's cable tie this baby. So I want to have this in here and not wiggling around and not making any movements. Yeah, that's the ugly truth. There will be a cable tie visible. Okay, so that is, that's better. So when I move this plate, this will not be moving, which is double A++, but this will still get in the way here. So I have to think about something here, maybe just like this. So we'll cable tie this to this. This will then hopefully not push against all the other stuff and do the cable like this. Let's see. this. So these cables now have their places. If I push, this should go here and this should go here, in theory at least. So let's put it all back in here. And let's see if it holds up. That's, that seems to be okay. Okay, now we have to put this in, which is the button cable, which I, the button I mounted back here, and the power cable, which we have to pull through here, so that this black thing can go in there, and that should be in there, like this. Now we have to push the cable a bit further. It's all pretty cramped in here. That should in the end do the trick. So let's see if we get something on the screen. Which you can see here and we do. Very well. So this actually works. Nice. Let me close this up. And there's not much grip anymore. One thing about this solution is that there's no sound. So sound still has to come from the red and white plug on the back. So there's Dungeon Master, working, not flickering at all, nice. That is how this should have been in the first place. And it looks just, as you can see, great. Great, 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 great. Ah, oh, man, I love that. That is how I intended this console to be in the first place. And now it's finally, finally done. Yeah, so this is my HD mod. Um, 
Let me show you the back of the console now. I put in the put in the HDMI connector here, which is a standard HDMI connector, and this button to activate the RGB to HDMI menu. Yeah, so nothing nothing much to see here. You can l see a little bit of the cable tie here. Oh, that's okay. So this is now a two plug solution. HDMI and power and of course a mouse or joystick in the front, which hopefully all still works. Maybe let's test this quickly. It should show, should show Dungeon Master. Flash floppy Dungeon Master, yeah, okay. All the LEDs still work, nice. Okay, so this concludes this uh, little follow-up video. Thanks for watching and as you can see we still have the, the issue with the rips here but I'm not too concerned about that. So as I said thanks for watching and until next time see ya bye bye. So I'm playing this game here for a while now worthy it's it's it's, it's worthy and it's from 2018 it's a new Amiga game new new Amiga game and the machine just works it's awesome I modded some boxes to connect to the back of the console because HDMI doesn't transport the sound right now. So I have sound and a super brilliant image. And that is console-like level, I like it. And this joystick is just awesome to use this. So, yeah, that is really the conclusion of this project for now. Thanks for watching and until next time. See you around, bye-bye. Thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. If you need any PCBs, pre-assembled PCBs or 3D printing, please use the link in the description below. Thank you for watching Retro is the New Black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you like the video, please share. Every like, share and comment helps a lot. Until next time, bye bye.